This After Effects tutorial is sponsored by AEJuice.com. In this After Effects tutorial, we will be creating a glass morphism effect inside of After Effects without using any plugins. Glass morphism is mostly a UI UX trend that has been steadily growing in popularity over the last year. The general idea is to have a background blur on an object giving the impression of a frosted glass. It's a pretty cool effect if we use it in the right way. So let's recreate this effect in After Effects and let's see how to use it. So without any further ado, let's jump into After Effects and get started. Alright, so here we are in After Effects. Let's start by creating a new composition. Let's go with 1920 by 1080. Let's go with 30 FPS and let's keep the duration to 10 seconds. I'll rename the comp to render as this is going to be our main render comp. There we go. Let's hit Ctrl Y to create a new solid called this BG for background and let's make this white. Hit OK. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is start building up our background shapes. So to do that, I'm going to select the rectangle tool. We don't need any stroke. We just need the fill and let's create a perfect square using or holding shift and just dragging just like that. Also, I want to place the anchor point into the center. So to do that, I'm going to hold control and double click on the pan behind tool. Okay. So there you go. There we have the anchor point is now in the center. Let's select the layer, hit U two times to reveal all the properties. Let's go into rectangle path one and let's add a little bit of roundness, maybe something like 35. All right. Also, I will change the size to around 650 and hit R and rotate this a little bit just like that. And I'm going to place this one like so. I think I'm going to increase the size a bit more. So let's go with 700. Now let's click and hold and select the ellipse tool. Let's create an ellipse just like so. I'm going to hit U two times and let's increase the size a bit. So something like that. Let's go with something like 720 looks good. And I'll place it. Let's select this, hit Control D to duplicate it. I'll place one circle right here. Select this, hit U two times again and let's bring down the size a bit like so. Okay, that is looking good. We can select the square, hit control D and pull this up. And let's place this one right here. Rotate this to a different degree and also hit U two times and increase the size like so. And finally, I will select the circle, hit control D, place this on the top and place this one right over here something like that so basically our base for the background so let's go ahead and add some nice colors to this so let's start from the square i'm going to go into effects and preset type in ramp double click to apply the ramp and change the ramp shape from linear ramp to radial ramp let's place the black point right over here and the white point i'll place it like so now for the colors, I'm going to use some specific color codes that I want to use for this um, tutorial. I have mentioned the free project file. You can download the free project file from the link in the description below, which will also consist the color codes, the exact color codes that I'm using here. So I'll, let's select this Hit control C, control V, control C and control V. So there we have our nice colors. Now I also want to add some drop shadow to this. So let's select the layer, go, go into effects and preset and type in drop shadow, double click to apply that up. And for the color, I'll pick with the darker shade just like that and also increase the opacity to 60. Let's bring down the distance to zero and increase the softness all the way up to 500. So we get this really nice look as you can see. I think 60 is a bit too much. Let's go with 45. That looks much better. 
okay so now i can select these two effects hit ctrl c to copy it and let's select the second shape hit ctrl v to paste that up now i can select the gradient ramp and let's move this point right over here at the top and this one to the bottom let's add the second color palette ctrl c ctrl v Control C, Control V, and select the same color. There we go. Let's select the third palette and the same exact process. All right. So there we go. Our background shapes are good to go. Let's add a little bit of movement to this. So I'll select the shape, hit P, hold Alt and click on the stopwatch and let's add a simple wiggle expression. Open and close parentheses. Let's go with 1, 30. Alright, so now we have a little bit of movement as you can see into our shape. So I can just copy this expression, hit Ctrl C. Let's select all the shape layers, hit P to bring down the position. Let's click on the stopwatch by holding Alt and let's hit Ctrl V. And just copy paste it just like that. So now if I preview this, you can see we have a little bit of movement here, which looks pretty nice. So let's now go ahead and create our main uh, shape of this tutorial. That is a glass morphism effect that we are looking for. Now, before we proceed further with this tutorial, let me tell you about today's sponsor, AE Juice. They have an amazing I want it all bundle, which contains over 5,000 animated elements like transitions, presets, titles for your project. It comes with a handy pack manager plugin, and this is one of those investments that will last you for a lifetime. Plus, they also have a starter pack, which has over 100 animations that you can try it out for free. For more information, check out the link in the description below. So I'll select the rectangle, the rounded rectangle, and let's create something like this. I'm going to rename this shape to glass. We can also change the color of this, make this yellow maybe. And now I want to place the anchor point into the center again. So hold control and double click on the pan behind tool and then I can align it into the center. I can I, I can go into rectangle one rectangle path one let's give it a little bit of more random uh, roundness just like that I can unlink this let's increase the size a bit more 1200 by 800 it would be fine look good that looks good maybe 1300 a bit bigger all right so that is looking good now what I'm going to do, I'm going to convert this shape layer into an adjustment layer. So I'll click on this particular icon right here. Now if you don't see this option, you can hit F4 on the keyboard and that should make it visible. And after that, I'm going to go into effects and preset and let's add a fast blur, fast box blur on, actually on this. So there we go. And now if I increase this, we get this really nice blur effect. So I'll set this to around 45 works good. And for the iteration, I'll set this to 30. All right, so now it's looking pretty nice. Now what I'm going to do is make sure it's selected. Let's select the ellipse tool and create a circle. Now make sure that so by default, create shapes will be turned on. So let's switch to create mask. So I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to create a circle from the center holding control and shift at the same time, just like that. And now if I invert this, we get this really nice look. Let's hit F for feather and feather this up by 400. So now you can see we get this very nice look that I'm going for. Now I can select the glass layer, hit Ctrl D to duplicate it. Let's um, make this a shape layer and we don't need any fast blur on this. And what I want to do is change the color to white. All right. And then hit T. And bring down the opacity really low like 5% or maybe something like 8% yep that looks much better so it, ha so it adds a nice highlight as you can see and let's rename this to high for highlight all right and finally I'm gonna duplicate this again so hit control D duplicate it let's call this stroke and we don't need any mask on this so I can delete this 
and what I need is a nice stroke. So I can hit control shift H so we can hide the control layers and see what's happening here. So you can see we add this really nice stroke. So I'm gonna set this around 15, I guess. Hit T and let's increase the opacity to around 15. Also, we don't need any fill. So I'm gonna click on fill and set this to none. Now maybe 15 is a bit too much. So let's go with something like eight. Yep, that is looking much better. So now you can see the complete uh, design is looking very, very nice. Also, I'm going to rename this from stroke to stroke. So that looks pretty good. And basically, this is how you create this nice um, glass feel to this. You can, if you want, you can just uh, turn off the mask and, um, you know, get this kind of look. But I think it adds a nice depth to the complete scene. So now I can go ahead and add any text that I want. So I can select the text tool and type in any text. So let's type in glass morphism. And for the font, I'll go with a Nexa. That looks pretty good. All caps. Let's bring down the size like this and let's place it something like that. Now it's getting blend with our background. So we can actually go ahead and add a nice drop shadow to this. So let's go double click and let's add a drop shadow. I'll set the opacity to 20 and um, let's move this to the bottom just like so. Let's set the distance to 25 and the softness to 45. So we get a very nice look as you can see. And you can go ahead and add in more detail if you want to. And basically you get the desired look. So that is how you can create a nice glass morphism look in After Effects. You can actually create this in Photoshop as well and then bring it in After Effects and animate it. But why not create it in After Effects and animate it here itself as it will save you a hell lot of time. So that is a wrap guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the glass morphism effect. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram at dope.motions and I will see you in the next video. Till then take care and always stay raw stay creative peace out